Hi there, I'm Nils Weidert and I uh, got a video for you uh, where we're going to talk a lot about scales and uh, how to use them for improvising in, in, a, in a way that um, aren't that typical for um, us rock players. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the way that, that um, within this genre, like uh, I consider it's kind of a, a, a rock genre, um, you know, uh, what I used, I used a, a, a Greg Howe song to, um, as, as an example, where he, um, he uses uh, dominant chords moving in, in uh, fifths, um, so I have to make use of many different scales, um, pretty much um, if, I, if I'm not playing pentatonic, and I'm almost only using, I'm using uh, sometimes the, the blue scale, but I mainly use the Mixolydian scale. Um, and the reason for this is, is when you play this kind of, of music, like, you know, rock and metal and, and stuff like that, but for example, you want to be more, uh, you, you want to develop your um, improvisation skills without playing jazz music still I still consider it as as rock or metal or whatever you want, want to call it but with a strong influence in from blues and jazz and stuff like that but it never really becomes jazz I think it's more like that whole channel with uh, all the shrapnel artists and if you want to put any kind of label on it um, and and typically if you are playing that kind of music um, you have a strong background in the scales and um, so instead of <clears throat> like a blues player for example a traditional blues player like bb king or something like that where you really put strong emphasis on your ear of course that's a, a, a an important um, thing to be able to use because it's it's all about because, uh, being, being able to make music right um, but still, when we play this kind of music as, as we do, or I do, and Greg Howe and many other players, um, we still want to be able to use our strong background in the scales. Uh, and, you know, having a way to, uh, having our way with all our chops and stuff like that. And um, so what I do here is, and it's kind of, it takes some, uh, some getting used to because with this, for example, this uh, example, I cannot just play one scale and get away with it. If I do that, yes, I can do that, play a, maybe a, a blue scale or something like that, and then I can use my ear to, you know, kind of slide into a note that fits a little better. But that's still ta taking a chance and you can maybe also argue and say, okay, but that's also a part of uh, improvise over the type of this type of music. Um, but you know, when we have this kind of rock background, we want to be able to rip, you know. Um, so, so I want to show you a way to um, to develop this kind of uh, way to 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 be able to play this kind of thing. Um, my plan is to make this video to kind of a development so i start really slow i still I still use the whole uh, chord progression which is quite a lot of chords but um but that being said i start out really slow 
I don't use a lot of chops or anything like that. I mainly focus on using the right scales all the time. So I, um, what this takes is that you need to develop your, first of all, your, um, your, your seven patterns of the major slash minor scale. Because what this does, so in this first part, I'm gonna um, show you what I do to be able to go from one chord to the next, improvising, making sure that I use all the right notes. I still, I still have you know a place where I like to start. At some point, if I just want to improve on that whole way of playing. I cannot just start one place. I want to be able to use the whole fretboard all the time. Of course, that's but that's complete mastery, right? So what I do now for just whoever you are, if you, Greg Howe, the first time he made the song, he of course he would also have to get into it and spend some amount of hours being able to play a a, a satisfying solo that that he could be happy with, and that's also what I want to show you. And of course, when you improvise, you will always there will also always be some kind of um, percentage of if you listen to it, you say, "If I got a second shot, I would have done something differently." But that's the, pretty much the nature of improvising. Um, you kind of get the 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 nature of improvising and and you know the energy that you get when you're in the moment and stuff like that and that. Sometimes it's it's completely amazing, and you wouldn't wouldn't have done that if you arranged the complete and composed the solo. Um, but then again, you also have a, a chance of goofing off sometimes. But that's just the whole nature of it. So anyway, and the better you become, the less goofing off you got. So what I do here is I first I start off in the um, uh, uh, in the E. Uh, dominant chord and then so over that I play the Mixolydian scale and I see it from the A scale so I just get one place to start from so from the uh, E on the A string it will look like this and once you know once you know the the the, the full scale pattern you can start anywhere and just see it from there and then you'll know how it develops from there. So if I just see it from here, I know my pattern, and I know it. If I play it on all six strings, it'll end up being the second uh, pattern of the A of A major. So the next chord we go into is the A dominant. So and I got the mixolydian from here. And once I got the scales down, you know, once I feel really comfortable with the scales, I will see that if I'm playing here in this pattern, I will start to see the next pattern from A. So that'll be here. But if I'm here, I can see it kind of the sixth pattern. Because that will be like the fifth from A. I uh, know it's a little sounds a little complicated right now, but that could also be your first step. Only shifting between those, that would actually be a great lesson, and we can do that uh, in a later video, where we just take the two scales and get comfortable with that and move all over the fretboard. Um, the next thing that happens is we get to get, go to F sharp. So be down both dominant chords. And then again, I do the same thing. I do use those patterns, the fifth pattern from F sharp, and then the same from B. And again, I know that the fifth pattern starting from the A string will be the second pattern from E. And the more comfortable I get with this, the less I have to move around on the neck. I can stay pretty much on the same spot and see which pattern I would be in. The next that happens is we go into A flat dominant. And I keep doing the same thing and then to D flat uh, dominant. So, you know, you almost don't notice that I'm shifting scale. I'm shifting now to D flat. And then 
finally I go into the uh, B flat. And the A and the A flat. So I could arguably also, I could also start using the, 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 the blue scale uh, and the pentatonic, but... And, and it kind of, I think when you got this, this kind of pattern, it makes sense to make kind of a little ending for it because you wouldn't, taking the same scale and moving it in a semi-tone uh, like that um, on every fourth or every half, half uh, a measure would can't kind of, can be not so interesting to listen to. So it'd be cool to make a little ending or something like, or stay in one note that you know will work on all three, for example, and you will, you can maybe make use of that blues uh, from the fourth, the flat fifth into the fifth. So. Because then, um, as you know, you also get the flattened, uh, third or the minor third uh, that you can uh, fit into the dominant chord uh, so you can kind of mess around a little bit with the, uh, with the major and the minor thirds on each of those chords and um, and make that a kind of a cool little effect because you get that kind of a bluesy sound and the same goes for the fifth and the flat fifth so that would be the first um, uh, step into this kind of improvising. I will uh, uh, get you a little link here to, uh, to the chord progression uh, so that you know what you have to work with here um, and you can click the link and then you can download the pattern. Um, so I'll see you in the next video within a few days and um, other than that I also as you may have seen before, if you've seen my videos, I've got quite a few free programs to focusing a lot on technique. Um, so this is kind of a little more of a theory and kind of an improvising uh, tool uh, work we got here. But then you also got some free stuff uh, focusing more on, on um, putting more emphasis on the technical uh, way of playing the guitar. So. Um, uh, stay tuned uh, for in a few days I will upload some more videos on um, on this song so I see this kind of a first uh, step into um, playing in this in this kind of way developing our improvisation tools uh, and and also um, uh, the theory uh, way of things and being able to shift between scales is kind of a big a hassle from most players uh, unless they're kind of um, in more into putting more focus on jazz. <laughs>